Welcome to Hot Out of Flash Pro Training Part 40. In this video, we're going to take a look at some troubleshooting diagnostics with our FKA application, specifically taking a look at what a boost leak looks like in some data logs. Now, this is going to be extremely important. The FKA ECU responds in a very particular manner when there's a boost leak. It's a little bit different than other applications I've worked with, so I want to go include data logs and just walking you through what to look for, and compare it against an actual data log from a pool that's going to be proper, so it has no boost leak. Again, you're going to be able to spot these trends and know exactly what's going on, saving you hours of time and troubleshooting. Without further wait, let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at doing diagnostic troubleshooting within our FK8 applications. I'm going to be sharing with you two common problems that I found by doing a lot of tuning on FK8s recently that hopefully is going to save you a lot of headache and a lot of time when you're doing the tuning. So if you know that there's something wrong, you'll have at least a reference point if it's going to be one of these two issues that we're going to be finding in this video. So the very first example here I want to talk about is going to be a 2019 Civic Type R that I worked with. This came in having a, a rough running condition, so part throttle. The owner was describing the, the sound the engine would make as knock, the engine sound that goes knocking and misfiring, and at full throttle, the engine just did not feel fast. It felt very slow. The owner bought the vehicle new in 2019. He drove it for about two or 3,000 miles. He hit a pothole and knocked a, a hole into the actual oil pan. And in that situation, we lost all the oil. The engine seized up, and then Honda had to replace it under warranty. So in that situation, he got a brand new engine, and he started to drive the vehicle again. Now, at this point, the car was all stuck, and he noticed immediately there was a power loss. It felt like it was down a tremendous amount of power. The vehicle felt sluggish. It didn't drive smooth. He took it back to Honda several times, and they couldn't diagnose, uh, diagnose what was wrong with it. They ran it through all their scanners. It wasn't throwing any check engine lights. So he was extremely frustrated. He brought it to a performance shop and had a bunch of parts installed. So he had typical bolts on nods. He had the intake, the inlet pipe, the downpipe, the exhaust, stock turbo, stock fuel systems, and you put a Honda to flash pro in. The car felt faster, but it still didn't feel right, and it made odd sounds, and he just wasn't sure what was going on with it. So he wanted to bring in and have me look at this. So we put it on the dyno. And I started to just drive part throttle um, with the existing Honda out of, uh, file that he used. So it was just a basic, uh, I think it was intercooler and exhaust file for 93 octane. It wasn't anything special. I noticed immediately when I was driving just at part throttle conditions. What he described as a knocking sound or a misfiring sound was misfire. And it was generated based on the fuel pressure scattering all over the place. So if we take a look down here, and I don't have a data log of this, unfortunately, but this goes along with uh, the data log that I do have here. The problem goes along with that. We notice here that we have our fuel pressure and fuel pressure command. And we know that these should be pretty close to each other. We don't have direct control over um, what's going on with this at full throttle. Essentially, we just give it a target and it meets that target. There's really nothing special with this. We actually jump into this specific table here. So we have fuel pressure normal. This is our command table for what we want the fuel pressure to be at, at engine speeds versus the torque production out of the engine. What I was noticing with this particular car was that at part throttle, so a steady throttle, steady RPM holding at 3000 on the dyno, I noticed that my fuel pressure command would be all over the place. It would go from 1200 to 2900 max scale here, back to 1200, it was kind of oscillating all over. That's not normal behavior for an FK8 part throttle. We don't need to have our fuel pressure command be so high because the cylinder pressure isn't that high that we're generating at part throttle conditions. It's only until we get into full throttle when we need to ramp up that fuel pressure to overcome the cylinder pressure because as we add more boost pressure and we get add more airflow, we're going to find that the cylinder pressure increases, which is why we need to ramp up what the actual uh, fuel pressure command here is going to be. So again, I'm noticing the fuel pressure command all over the place. The actual fuel pressure is following suit to whatever the command's showing. And I'm noticing as I'm driving that the fuel trims here are cycling back and forth pretty rapidly. We're seeing, I was seeing that the short term and long term trims here were going in and pulling out up to about 20 to 30, even 40% fuel as that fuel pressure was swinging in part throttle conditions. So I knew something was wrong. I didn't know exactly what was wrong. So looking at this particular table and the torque, uh, we have our engine RPM and torque at the top. I was holding it at a fixed engine speed here of 3000 roughly on the dyno. And I noticed that the fuel pressure command here was kind of moving all over the place. And the only way it would do that is if we're looking at this table here, that the torque scale at the top, that would mean that the torque scale was constantly moving. Now I was steady state throttle. The engine was steady state. So there had been no real reason for that torque production to be fluctuating and varying. So that was the first indication I knew something wasn't right. It had misfiring. It didn't feel right. 
um, and it was very sporadic of the way it would actually operate. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.